Welcome to My Watches with Ben, where I talk about choices I've made in my watch collecting hobby. Was this dive watch a good or a bad choice? Keep watching to find out. Today's watch is the Citizen Whale Shark. It's a reissue of a funky dive watch that Citizen had. It's got a really unique titanium case. Um, it's got Citizen's proprietary surface hardening that's five times harder than steel. And it's got a lot of other really cool features, such as 200 meters water resistance, and it's solar powered. Now I'll cover the specs and the features, the positives and the negatives, and give my final thoughts. Let's start off with the specifications. Specifications. The diameter is, according to Citizen, it's 47. It's a little bit hard to measure. If you measure from top to bottom, it's actually 44 millimeters. But if you measure like diagonally across here, it's 53. I don't know, it works pretty large, you can see. Let's call it 47, that's what Citizen says. The lug width is 24 millimeters. The thickness is 13 millimeters. 13 or 14, again, this is a tough one. The lug to lug is another interesting one where Technically, the lug-to-lug -lug is shorter than the actual diameter of the case. It's, you can see it's even cut out here into this little ring on the case back. So the lugs are very close together. The water resistance is 200 meters. The crystal is a mineral crystal. And the movement is an eco-drive movement. It's an eco-drive Japan movement. The price I paid for it was $390. And the case material is super titanium, that's what Citizen calls it, which is titanium with a Duratect scratch-resistant coating, what they call it surface hardening, but it's, it's a coating on top of the titanium from what I can tell. That's not a scratch, that's my fingernail, the case destroying my fingernail, and there's just a deposit of my fingernail on top of the case. Now onto the features. Features. For timekeeping features, you get the three hands, the hour, minutes, and seconds. You also get a date complication at the three o'clock. You get a unidirectional 60 click count up timing bezel, which means if you set it at a particular time, the as the minute moves, you will count up. Start at zero, go up to 10. Um, for readability and darkness, there is loom on the hour and minute hands, as well as on the counterbalance of the second hand. And there's also a loom pip on the timing bezel. So there's some typical citizen stylized hands we got going on here. There's an arrow minute hand and a very chunky hour hand. It has the same gray black color as the case. The hands are segmented like a stained glass window with that, the metal, the gray black metal creating these different sections. There are pointy tips on the ends of the hands. The second hand has a like kind of a thin arrow at the end of it, thin arrow tip, which is not loomed. The white of the second hand doesn't really match the loom color on the indexes. The second hand has a loomed lollipop as the counterbalance. The dial itself is a pretty navy blue sunburst. There's a solar panel underneath the dial. So light is going through the dial and being captured to power the solar movement. There's a whale shark dot pattern with horizontal lines. That whale shark kind of pattern on the dial. It's sort of like chalk on a rough surface when you look at it really closely. It's not very crisp printing for the pattern there. There's white printing for the words. The printing on the dial reads CITIZEN above the pinion in all caps and then below. You've got the ProMaster logo, the kind of arrowhead, um, and it says EcoDrive in italics, and then Divers, all caps, 200 meters. Then at the bottom, you've got this interesting Japan movement. You've got this long stream of alphanumeric characters for some reason. For your enjoyment, it is E168-A5MV005 space EY. I have no idea why this is on the dial. And interestingly, the number on the case back, there's a similar number on the case back, but it differs. Five of the digits differ. E168A5K9N02. I don't know why it differs, why the numbers differ. The dial has applied indices. 
They are polished, but appear to be black. There's triangles and circles. You can see the triangles for the kind of the major markings. Um, the one at three o'clock has been cut off to accommodate that date window. There's a larger triangle at 12 than at the six and the nine. And they've got the little line, which is sort of like a sector dial. And the black line within the indexes is continued with a white line on the dial. So that's kind of cool. It's a lot of little details like that. Citizen likes to put a lot of design elements into one watch. The date window has rounded corners and is borderless. And you will see that the, the, the date itself is not really centered within that date window. See, as I go through the dates, some of them are more centered than others. We've got very cool fonts in here. You see that seven is slightly to the left. They're all slightly to the left. But it's, it's a pretty deep cutout too. The chapter ring appears to be plastic, just thicker marks every five minutes. Loom is generously applied everywhere it is used. The loom is quite strong on this watch. To give you a feel, I have it here next to a badly loomed watch, which is the Corju Black Bay Homage, and an okay loomed watch, the Hamilton Khaki. And as you see the time go by, you can see that the Citizen is way better than either one of these. Citizen loom is, based on what I've seen with this watch, the Citizen lube is outstanding. The crystal is mineral crystal. And one thing that'll actually help with the scratch resistance is the fact that the crystal is recessed. The actual bezel insert sits above the crystal, and then it's got these little crenellations or ridges on the bezel that sit above that. So if you drop this, if you drop the watch on a flat surface, the the crystal wouldn't even touch the surface. So that that'll aid in scratch resistance. The bezel is a 60 click unidirectional bezel. The positions feel kind of rounded. It's hard to describe, but it doesn't really click. It, it definitely settles in one spot. You can see that happening, but it doesn't really feel like it clicks. You can kind of round. If you wanted to, you could kind of just force this thing to just be a smooth turn where there's no stopping points. It's really crazy. It's very gritty and indistinct. Ah, it doesn't feel good, I'll be honest. The aluminum bezel insert is really nice. It's got some sparkly elements to it. The printing is crisp and neat on it. It kind of looks like a life preserver. It has that kind of style to it uh, with the, the really thick lines at the five, the 15, the 25, the 35, so forth. It makes it kind of look like a life preserver. And I really like how the numbers curve. I've seen other cheaper watches mess up. So you see the 20, the actual letters themselves curve. They're not straight across. The two and the zero, since they're at different points around the circle, they need to have a different angle. They need to be close together at the bottom and then farther out at the top in order for it to look like the numbers really belong on the bezel. A lot of watches will just have the two and the zero in a straight line with each other, and it just it always looks weird. So this they did the numbers right on this one. That looks really good. And there's there's impressions where where they filled it with ink impressions into the aluminum bezel. This is one of the things that improves the overall perceived quality of the watch. For the case finishing, um, there's a very unique shape to this case. It's kind of crazy how many different angles and design elements are going on here. It's a very uh, complicated architecture to this case kind of ridges and you've got these bezel guard things going on and it's sort of like a square but it's also round um, and it's you've got these just extra little points in the four corners citizen calls the material for the case super titanium the case is titanium which has been coated in citizens proprietary duratect alpha surface hardening which they say has five times the hardness of stainless steel on this watch, when you rub your fingers against it, it feels like a very, very fine sandpaper. It's, uh, it's got a grittiness to it. And things will collect on it. So if I bump this up into something, I showed that earlier with my fingernail, it will leave behind the residue of whatever touched it. The case is unharmed. That'll wash right off. But it does tend to pick up 
like debris from the world because it is kind of a rough texture on the case. Another benefit to a titanium dive watch is that titanium is very resistant to rust. So salt water will not really cause this thing to rust. Citizen, it's funny, they say, Citizen states that the spring bars will rust because those are steel. But I think the other parts are really not going to have any problem with salt water. Still a good idea to rinse it off, but you just know with this watch that it's very robust. As for the lugs, it's a lugless design. And the lug to lug, as I mentioned, is actually shorter than the overall case diameter. As for the strap, Citizen calls this polyurethane. That's what they say the strap is made out of. It just feels like rubber. It's got a very chunky Citizen buckle on it, engraved with the Citizen name. It's very Japanese looking buckle. The strap flares out here at the end, so if the pin buckle slips, it's still gonna have some kind of resistance here. It's not, it's gonna get caught. And if you pull harder, it'll come through, obviously, because you need to push this through. But there's a little bit of resistance to get it through either way, because it flares out there. The strap has two keepers. One is kind of fixed in place here. They've got a little notch where it sits. So that's, that one's supposed to kind of stay there, and then this one's the floating one. They're very, very thick keepers. The strap has two folds for stretch, so that it'll, um, you can stretch it over something and have a tighter fit. Citizen gives you this cool strap extender. So you just, you just thread this through here, put in the pin, and you um, put these underneath. And then this allows you to to wear the watch over a wetsuit or even over a jacket. You can wear it over a jacket in the cold or a big coat, really, because this adds a ton of length. Look at that. That's very cool. Now, you just have to remember that you have it in the box. The watch features a screw-down crown, which aids in the water resistance. It has an industrial-style hobnail pattern or crosshatch, however you want to describe this here. Got a very grippy knurling to it. The crown is signed with Citizen's ProMaster logo. The color on the crown matches the case very well. Case back has is laser engraved with a whale shark and all kinds of text back here, which I have already covered. Um, the case back does appear to be kind of a bead blasted titanium. The metal is far too dull looking to be steel. It doesn't appear to have it doesn't have the same Duratect coating, but I believe this is still titanium here. There's five notch cutouts for removing the case back. However, probably shouldn't attempt any repairs yourself because it says, you see it says service center repair only. This watch comes with a five year warranty. And if you register the watch, you get an extra year on top of it. So it's really a six year warranty with this watch, which is amazing. As for the accuracy, after 10 days of testing, I had an average of plus 0.29 seconds a day which equates to about nine seconds a month. And uh, Citizen's Manual states that the accuracy is plus or minus 15 seconds a month. So I'm doing better. The movement is an EcoDrive movement from Citizen. It's a Japan movement. And it says that it's magnetic resistant. Uh, when the charge on this is low, the second hand will start ticking in two second intervals instead of one second intervals. However, it will only do this for four days and then it will lose power this happens, all you have to do is expose it to light and it will start on its own once it's been charged enough. According to the manual, under a 30 watt light bulb, if it's very close, it could take seven hours to fully, to, to just have enough power to start ticking again. Um, it takes a full 11 hours outside on a bright summer day to fully charge the watch from empty. And it takes 120 hours in bright indoor lighting to, to charge this thing from fully empty to fully charged. So that actually takes quite a while. It, I'm wondering if this thing is, is getting enough charge just sitting in a box and only being worn occasionally. I think they want you to wear this one all the time. The box for this is actually huge. And like a lot of watches, there's a box within a box. So you've got the, the outer box and then you get this fun inner box. This is pretty cool. You've got silver whale shark um, embossed, is that the right word, into the velvet blue velvet and just your standard pillow 
some kind of hang tag and all kinds of stuff. I got it from an authorized dealer. Here's the instructions to register the watch. The manual is available online at Citizen's website using the, the model number of the watch, which is BN0225-04L. Now on to the positives. Positives. There's a ton of things I like about this watch. Um, it's a very unique design for a dive watch. I don't think I've seen any case quite like this. The grab and go nature of quartz watches is really very handy. The dial is really pretty. Um, the blues go together, the blue dial and the blue bezel match each other really well. They're not exact, but they go together. The handset is really cool. I like the matte look to it. It's very easy to see the time at a glance. Like di all dive watches, that's a nice feature about it is you look down and it's very easy to see what time it is. Eco drive is nice. I don't have to worry about changing a battery. It's all, it's just gonna, if it runs out, I can just sit it out in the sun and it'll start up again. The loom is really strong on this. I love the loom. I really like the color of the coating on this watch. Overall, it just seems really reliable and robust. It's a really great tool watch. Doesn't have to just be used for diving, in my opinion. It's actually really tactical and utilitarian. This would feel right at home at the Pentagon or in a working man's wrist or hiking or even at the beach. It's got a really cool case back. It's very light because of the titanium, and I really like the crosshatch pattern on the, the crown here. The six year warranty on it is absolutely insane. So that's really sweet. Now onto the negatives. Negatives. So my negatives list is a lot shorter than the positives list, but there are some things I don't care for. The bezel has a lot of issues to it. I mentioned earlier I like the design of it. I mean, I like how it looks, but there's some practical issues with this thing. The main one is that the bezel just kind of migrates on its own. If I barely touch this into anything, that bezel's gonna move. There's no way that it will not move. Literally, these crown guards do absolutely nothing. The, I'm, gonna, I'm calling them crenellations, the little bezel bumps, the place where you grip the bezel. It goes above these bezel guards. So these, these four bezel guards don't prevent anything. You can turn it just fine right past the bezel guard because it's too short to do anything. So every time I wear this watch, when I look down, um, what I'll see is that this is like three notches to the left. Every single time, if I wear it for a few hours, this is what's gonna happen, no matter what I'm doing. It just gets knocked out of place. I really would have liked a fully loomed bezel and I would have preferred that it's 120 click, not 60. The bezel action in general is just awful. The bezel feels straight up nasty. Second negative is that the rubber strap is just not my thing. It's not my bag, baby. I don't go for rubber straps. Um, it works okay on this watch, because the, the case is titanium. The issue I usually have with rubber straps is that the heavy case tends to flop around and then the rubber will squeeze my wrist. So if you try to get it tight to the wrist or even just, you know, the, the, the end is just gonna swing around and pull around. It just feels uncomfortable on the wrist. That's my issue with the rubber. On this one, I can tolerate it because it's so light, like I said. And if I'm going around the house or working outside, that's all fine. However, when I have to be on my computer, when I'm desk diving, this thing's really uncomfortable. The keepers on it are so chunky that it digs into the, the back of my wrist. And I can only type for maybe five minutes or so before I start feeling swelling and numbness and weirdness. I just have to take this thing off. There are only a few watches that I can wear for like an extended typing period of one or two hours. Like I said, I kept it on the rubber because what I do is I just take it off when I have to type. It's just, ooh, just after like 10 seconds actually, it feels so bad on the back of the wrist here. It's really uncomfortable. Third negative is that the case, the rough coating on the case really picks up debris. 
I just scratch this with my fingernail and you see all that stuff here. It'll get paint, it'll get all kinds of stuff if you bump it up against the wall or whatever. This texture on the case is really rough and it tends to just grab things. And that's it. Those are all the negatives I have. Like I said, the bezel one is really bad. It just feels so nasty when you're trying to use this bezel. Now onto the closing. So, the closing. Was this a good watch or a bad watch for my collection? It was a good watch. Citizen never really disappoints me. I'm always pleased with what they have. I've got a little quibbles, a few quibbles, I, I mentioned that. Um, but overall, the watch feels incredibly solid and robust. And that's what's important. It's very light. It has a very unique design, which I like. The quartz is really nice because you can just grab and go. And solar means no battery changes, which I really like. I mean, this is actually my most tactical watch that I have. It feels right at home working in the garage, camping, doing yard work, or any other scenario where I need a tough, reliable watch. And I don't have to worry about scratches because it's five times the hardness of steel. So this is going to hold up better than any steel watch I have. The strap is only really an issue when I'm typing. And honestly, most watches are uncomfortable when typing, so I often have to take a watch off when I'm typing. And now that the review's over, I'd like to pivot strongly and uh, share a Bible passage with you. Y'all know the drill. I'm not a pastor or anything. I just like to share the Bible with other people. So today's passage is from 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 through 7. It's the part before the extremely controversial passage. <laughs> But anyway, um, this one's not controversial whatsoever. Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all, to be testified in due time, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. There are many doctrinal points that can be made. I won't make them all, but I will focus on three of them. One, God wants us to love him. Two, Jesus is the way. Three, God wants us to love each other. For my first point, God wants us to love him. In verse 4, it says that God desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. God is all-powerful, so he could actually compel everyone to accept the gospel. So I've heard people say there's two wills of God. Well, not really. There's not really two wills. God wants everyone to be saved. But how do you define being saved? So being saved is when one freely accepts his love. It wouldn't be love if God compelled everyone to do it. Love must be freely given or else it is not love. If we were coerced into loving God, then that would not be good. God would just be playing with us like puppets. That wouldn't be love. At the same time, God cannot allow rebellion in heaven, so he can't just let anyone in. Whoever goes into heaven has to freely accept the gospel. So only those who have accepted Jesus can enter into heaven. Here's an analogy Let's say I give my daughter some candy. If she freely gives me the candy, that's a beautiful, wonderful thing. That's something she did out of her love for me. Now, I could have just withheld some of the candy and gave some to her, but it's not exactly the same. It's not even really the candy that I want. The, what I want is for her to love me. And so when she does something nice like that, that's very sweet and very special. And it's not the same as me just taking from her just forcing my will upon her. It's a very different thing. God desires for all of us to be good like him, but our rebellion interferes with that. So he designed a way for all of us to be saved and transformed. And um, no matter the, the severity of our iniquities, they will be forgiven. Calvary, which is Christ's crucifixion, covers it all. Jesus paid the price for our sins. So, God loves us dearly and has paid the cost of our sin, and all he wants in return is for us to love him back and be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. The point is just 
God wants everyone to be saved. God would love, God very much desires for everyone to be saved. Point number two, Jesus is the way to a relationship with God the Father. In verse five, it states that Jesus is the one mediator between God the Father and man. Due to our sinfulness, we cannot approach God directly. We need a mediator. We need the one who has paid our sin debt in full, and that one is Jesus. When Isaiah had a vision of the throne room of God, he said, Woe is me, I am undone. He came from a perverse world and was not fit to speak to God directly. So a seraphim put a live coal in his mouth to cleanse it. So we don't have to do all that. We have, we have a mediator in Jesus, and that's how we will be able to approach God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Point number three, God wants us to love each other. If we truly love God, then we will start to act and think like he does. We will get angry at injustice and have mercy on others. We want to care for others' needs. In verse 1 here, Paul says to pray for all men. So this includes unbelievers, of course. We should have a spirit of love for them. This seems obvious, but there's, there's other teachings in the Bible that say, you know, don't cast pearls before swine, these sorts of things that imply heavily that we should hold close other believers and help them. But the Bible also says that we should reach out to preach to everybody, to try to have a love for everybody. For example, in Romans 9.3, Paul said that he could wish that he himself was accursed from Christ if his brethren in the flesh, the other Jews, would be saved. So these were unbelievers. They, they were Jews. They were his brethren of the flesh, but they were not true believers. They didn't believe in the one way to salvation, which is Jesus. So this grieved him deeply. In verse 2, Paul says to pray for kings and all who are in authority. So our love for God should lead us to pray for unbelievers. Because as it says in verse 4, God desires all men to be saved. Even if our motives aren't completely there and we're just doing it for peace and quiet, it is still good and acceptable in the sight of God that we would pray for kings and pray for all men, pray for people in authority. Obviously, we don't have a king in the United States, but pray for our president, Joe Biden, to be healthy, to lead our country well, and to be saved. You know, I pray that he would be saved if he is not. So that's all I have on the passage today. Thanks for listening. And this is extra special timing because Mike Winger just released an epic video on a verse that comes just after this one. The woman should have no authority over a man passage. It's very triggering to people in our modern times. And uh, his video is 11 hours long. And I'm only like four and a half hours through it. I'm not even halfway through yet. But it has really been eye-opening. It's been really interesting to hear the egalitarian arguments and basically how they fall apart when you start scrutinizing the scholarship of these types of arguments. If you want the conclusion, Mike Winger is a complementarian, but it's based on his thorough, thorough research of all these arguments, these egalitarian arguments for the interpretation of this passage. Egalitarian meaning that men and women are, are the same. The other interpretation, the, the more traditional interpretation that he goes into is complementarian interpretation where men and women are complementary, where we have different roles, different roles in the church. That's, that's where the rubber meets the road on this one. And uh, I haven't gotten yet to his application of this passage, but I'm really interested in that because um, there's a lot of difference, a lot of differences in evangelicals, like the interpretation of what exactly does this passage mean? How do you apply it in the church setting? So if you really like a deep dive, I put the link directly to his 11 hour analysis in the description. So check it out. But I've also linked just the channels of four pastors that are really good. So those are in the, that's in the description too. So thanks for watching. Um, now I'll share a prayer. Lord, thank you for bringing people um, to your word and thank you for spreading your word, the Bible all over the, the world. And I'm just so grateful that people are given this opportunity to accept or reject your plan of salvation. And Lord, I just pray that you would move in people's hearts and that they would accept it. I pray that all would be saved and come to the, the realization of the truth. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and in every way. The Lord be with you all.
Take care. And, uh...